Time for Focus next, and today we bring you a report from Austria, the country where the Conservatives have formed a coalition with the far-right FPO party. The FPO includes members of Burschenschaft, pan-Germanic fraternities whose members join as students and are bound for life. They are often caught up in scandal and are accused of extremism and links to neo-Nazism. Burschenschaft's doors are often closed to the media. One of them, however, opened up for far for France 24. This is one of the oldest fraternities or Burschenschafter in Austria. Founded in the 19th century, Libertas today has around 60 members. Around this table, successive generations celebrate Germanic culture, a pillar of their identity. Men who joined as students, bound in brotherhood by the Burschenschaft for life. That's a concept that really appeals to Gernot, one of the youngest members. What I like is that different generations work together and support each other. Together, we're keeping our traditions alive. Freedom is very important to us, especially freedom of expression. Everyone here sees Austria as part of a bigger Germanic whole, unified by language, culture and common origins. But behind the ideological veneer lurk anti-Semitism and racism, say many observers, like Bernhard Weidinger, whose foundation has monitored the far right in Austria for years. They have always been uh, individual, individual Burschenschafter who have been neo-Nazi activists. Um, Burschenschaften who have been in contact with neo-Nazis, Burschenschaften who have cooperated with neo-Nazis, Burschenschaften who have accepted neo-Nazis into the ranks. So we see all kinds of, um, of cooperation. The fraternity's emblem, though, is proudly displayed. Three interlinked letters representing their centuries-old values, freedom, homeland and also honor, incarnated by the so-called mensur, an initiatory fencing duel. Here's the weapon with which we fight. You must understand this is not a sporting challenge. The important thing is to display courage. Peter Weiss, a Libertas member for over 50 years, rejects the extremism accusations. When you have a lot of Burschenschaft members, of course, the odd one may be anti-Semitic. But for the fraternities as organizations, anti-Semitism is not really an issue. Our opponents don't accept that. For self-validation, they need an enemy. And we're the enemy incarnate because we're a male fraternity. We're elitist. And we criticize globalization in the sense that we say that not all people are equal. The fraternities have only 4,000 members in Austria. However, they wield big influence within the far-right FPO party, now governing Austria together with the Conservatives. One-third of the party's MPs are Burschenschaft members, including the country's new vice-chancellor, Heinz Christian Strache. A covert power grab, according to the latest book by this journalist, a specialist on the far-right. To take power was in his party, Heinz Christian Strache, used the support of fraternity members. And now that he has it, he has rewarded them with a series of significant posts. The influence of the Burschenschafter was visible at the recent far-right annual ball in Vienna. In the ancient Habsburg Palace, at the heart of the capital, FPO carders and fraternity members danced the waltz, protected by 3,000 police officers. Beyond the walls, more than 8,000 protesters. It's a disgrace for Austria that these people are in government. They are misogynistic and anti-Semitic. It's a disaster. They're a nasty gang. I don't want to have anything to do with such people in government. FPO officials weren't immediately available for comment. The party's links to the Burschenschafter remain a sensitive topic, including for young fraternity members who may be eyeing a career in politics. Now, yesterday, the Austrian Chancellor, Sebastian Kurz, told reporters he will launch proceedings to sh shut one Burschenschaft fraternity. The decision following an outcry over revelations, the group used a songbook that praised the Holocaust and other atrocities committed by the SS and Nazi paratroopers. Now, for more on this story, we can bring in Eric Frey, Managing Editor of Austrian Daily Desk Standard from Vienna. Thank you very much for joining us on the program this afternoon.
just tell us, how popular are these fraternities in Austria exactly? Uh, if you can hear me, Eric Frey, I, I was just you. asking how popular these fraternities oh, are in Austria. Now I can hear you. Hello, I didn't know it was a question for me. Uh, well, they are not popular in the sense that a lot of people support them, but they're very popular in a very small segment of society. Uh, far right, German nationalists, a lot of uh, people who are academics, uh, lawyers, uh, some, 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 some officials, business people, and now they are very influential because the Freedom Party is closely tied to them. Do young and they people, have the internal do, power. Do young people join such fraternities nowadays? Well, they do. They do, but not like on a broad uh, broad level, but uh, small groups do join them, particularly in certain areas, in small towns, sometimes also in rural areas. And, and they find a lot of meaning, friends and ideas there that they like, but they really drag them to the very far right. And uh, some of these fraternities have also links to the radical, far right, radical, almost violent scene. So then why are they allowed to function? Well, they are not. Ill they cannot be uh, outlawed because there's nothing specifically illegal about about them, or at least they are not easy to. They are. They are not. They are not. It's it's hard to prove. Uh, they are part of a tradition on the first, on the political fringe. Now, the the fraternity Germania, which has gotten in the headlines now because of a songbook which had openly anti-Semitic songs, is now facing uh, a process of possible of 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 outlaw of, of prohibition, um, and but this, even that will be a difficult and and and, and slow process because it'll, it'll, they need to, they need to prove that the people who were in charge actually knew all about it. Now the fact that these fraternities are allowed to function even though th th there are no grounds to to close them down, if you will, doesn't that sort of give them legitimacy, if you will? Well, uh, they were legitimate in the sense that they were allowed to exist and they were popular in a certain part of society and they once in a year they had this ball in the center of Vienna which always drew a lot of protests. The legitimacy has certainly increased now because the Freedom Party from where a lot of the fraternity members are active in and now even sit in parliament is now part of the government. So this is the one of the biggest concerns about this new Austrian government that they have actually they legitimize a movement that should maybe not not be banished, but at least be shunned. I don't know if you were able to hear the report uh, which we played before coming to you. Now, one of the, the people in the report is a lawyer and member of a fraternity. And he says we are elitists and we criticize globalization. And in the sense that we say that not all people are equal. That sounds like pure and simple racism to me. Well, you would, yes, they, I think they are racist, but uh, one can also say they claim they are elitist in the meaning that not everyone is equal means some people are just more, uh, are just harder working or, or, or more efficient than others. They are certainly anti-migration. They are, they are, they have, they have, they have absolutely racist tendencies. Um, to, to, for them to really, uh, when they when they re, when they become when they violate the law, it would be once they they become they are they, are, they openly um, praise Nazi ideology, and usually they try to stay away from that at least in public. But you don't want to know exactly what happens with, behind closed doors. Do people publicly say that they are part of these fraternities? Is this something they brag about? Yes, they do. They absolutely do. And then they claim, when you ask them, they claim, well, the fraternities, they go back, the tradition goes back to the 19th century, to 1848, and they stand for freedom and, 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 civil, and, and, and civil values. So they proudly claim to be part of these fraternities, just like us in other countries, you have also for, uh, questionable fraternities, which are, which are, which are proudly presented. Uh, but they always are claiming that they have nothing to do with Nazi ideology or the old the, or, on, on Nazi terror or even anti-Semitism. But this is something which once in a while some, something is uncovered, like this songbook which was dragged out in public, and then it becomes obvious uh, the distance to, to the crimes of the past is not so clear. So what else can the government do? Just 
wait for these uh, things to be made public, like the songbook, for instance, because up until now they've been allowed to function without a, a hitch. Well, they will continue functioning, and you do have also, one has to say, there's a variety of fraternities, and some of them are more radical, and some of them are more mainstream and moderate, and there are also some Catholic fraternities which have a different tradition. So it would be impossible to 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 to, to totally ban them. Uh, the government has to wait, or the, the the prosecutors have to wait for actual signs of 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 of, of the violation of Austrian laws for them to become active. In the case of this uh, fraternity Germania, where, whose former vice chairman was a lead candidate in the province of Lower Austria, uh, it's something became public through uh, through an indiscretion and a leak in the press. Um, and now they're moving on it, but whether they will actually succeed to close it down is also open because the rule of law is pretty strict also in terms of allowing uh, the freedom uh, freedom of speech. Now that the FPO is part of the government, do you think the fraternities will be able to get away with much more? They may actually get away with less because they are more open out in the public and they will face more scrutiny. Uh, so uh, even though fraternity members have gained influence, the fraternities themselves are now under stronger pressure and are more on the defensive. And the Freedom Party leadership of Heinz Christian Strache, even though he was once a member of a fraternity and some of his key aides also are until today, they may want to put distance between themselves and the fraternities because it doesn't, it doesn't look good on them. Eric Frey, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us on the program this afternoon from Vienna. Thank you.